Hi! Originally, I was gonna call this video Fantastic Proofs and Where to Find Them. Today, I wanna talk to you guys about proofs or arcs and what they are, what the benefits of them are, and how you can get them. I feel like proofs are sort of seen by bloggers and booktubers as a sort of holy grail thing that you want to get, and I just wanted to talk about them. Okay, so we're gonna start at the beginning with the question, what is a proof or arc? Arc stands for advanced reader copy, and I'm just gonna grab a pile of them. So basically, a proof is a a printed manuscript in book form, but it is not the book in its final form. Usually it's still being edited or proofread, but a publisher obviously wants to get copies out early so that reviewers and bloggers can read the book and start talking about it before it comes out. Now they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, so I'm going to show you a couple. First of all, I have Lee Bardugo's Six of Crowns, and as you can see here, this I think looks quite a lot like the finished cover. And here it says, an uncorrected bound manuscript proof not for resale. It also has lots of information on the back, so it will have the, the marketing plan and things that the publisher will be doing around the book. It has all the contact details for the PR person or the marketing person, some hashtags, and the publishing date. I've got some other examples here. Um, this is Patrick Ness's The Rest of Us Just Live Here, the book proof. As you can see, fairly similar to the finished copy, which has like the big text. But uh, the illustration is pretty much the same. Again, on the back, there's lots of information here. Then there's this one from HarperCollins. It is called Nellie Dean, which I think I've shown before. It has a quote from Tracy Chevalier on the back. And as you can see, for this one, they sort of went for a very classy approach. And so there's not a lot on the outside. But in this case, they've put a lot of the information on the uh, on the first page. Then from Walker, again, there is Remix by Non Pratt. This one has the publishing date on the top. If you've seen a finished copy of this, you know it looks similar, but not exactly the same but similar enough that you'd be able to recognize it. It's very often, obviously, the cover won't be done yet when they print this. Then I have this one, which is Maurice, which I still don't know how to pronounce. This one is quite special because on the inside it says uncorrected bound proof number 15 of 40. So sometimes proofs can be quite rare. The one thing that's a bit inconvenient about proofs is that obviously you're not allowed to sell them. So as far as I know, you're not allowed to give them to a charity shop because then a charity shop would try and sell it, which they're not allowed to do. So the only thing you can do is sort of like pass it on to a friend or bin it, which is such a shame. Sometimes I'm just stuck with proof copies after I've read them and I'm not sure what to do with them. And now the question is, how can you get your hands on proof copies? Now when I started my booktube channel, I was just reviewing all the books that I have bought myself and that's what I did for about the first three years, I think. I was never aware that you can contact a publisher to get review copies. And it wasn't until I moved to London in 2013 that I got in touch with my first publisher and they sort of sent me an email saying, would you like a copy of this book to review it? It wasn't until about six months later that I went to a bookshop and saw a book, checked the publisher and figured I would email them and see if I could possibly get my hands on a review copy. It's funny because this publisher actually turned out to be Hockey Books, which is where I work and that's sort of the first time I got in touch with them. If you're just getting started, I would say wait and build up a bit of an audience. I don't know about blogs, obviously, because that's not really my speciality. As a booktuber, I would say maybe wait until you have between like 800 and 1,000 subscribers before you start approaching publishers. It's good to sort of get going and make sure that you know that you want to do this for the long haul and that you're not just gonna get tired of it after a while. Either you can email them about a book that's coming out soon or you can just send them a general email asking if you can be put on their reviewer list. My emails are usually quite short. I will go for a, hi, my name is Sana. I have a YouTube channel called Books and Quills. Here are some stats about how many followers I have on YouTube and Twitter, etc. And I will just usually ask them, do you have a reviewer list that I could be considered for? If there's a very specific book, I'll add something about I'm very interested in reviewing this book. I was wondering if perhaps I could get a review copy. Sometimes the answer will be yes, sometimes the answer will be we don't have any copies right now but we can put you on a list for future books. I usually try to be very clear because I don't really like getting unsolicited review copies because I would get way too many books. So usually when I give them my address I will also add a little note saying that I would prefer not to receive any unsolicited copies. And when it comes to requesting stuff, one thing to keep in mind is how much you think you'll be able to read. Now, I know that I haul a lot of books that in the end I don't have time to read but that I sort of put on my shelf and plan to read later. But what I do always do is if I get a review copy, I will show it in a haul video, which will get more views than a review usually does. I'll make sure to tweet it at the publisher or send them an email just so they know that I've talked about it and so that they know that they're not just sending me book after book and they just sort of disappear into the void. So if you want to have a good relationship with a publisher, you don't have to email them all the time, but if you're tweeting about your new blog, 
blog post or your new video featuring one of their books they've sent to you, just make sure you copy them in so they know what's going on. Another thing to do if your blog or channel is still quite small is if you are reviewing a book that you've bought yourself, do check who published it. And again, when you're tweeting your review, make sure to put their Twitter handle in it so they're aware of what you're doing and then maybe they would like to share the review and it's just a good way to start getting in touch with people. So I think that probably covers most of the points I wanted to talk about. But of course, if you have any questions about other topics related to this that I forgot to mention in this video, you can leave it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys later. Doei!